better term. The reason we started in September is that way we can have a full one, two, three, take a little more time in reading it, answering any residents' questions before we go to final. The goal is always to have the entire budget passed by end of year, so it goes into effect. If you don't, which we have done in the past, you have to pass a temporary budget that takes you through the end of the first quarter and then come back and meet again um, to get a permanent budget for the whole year. So it's better to take care of it um, whenever I'm the um, finance chair, we do it so it's all passed for the whole year. Then we're only having to make amendments. And I think that's better for the residents to see. Um, they also believe then when we're doing it that way that we're really paying attention and taking care of the city. So. So without further ado, tonight is only for the five-year capital plan, nothing else, not day-to-day. -day. When we go through the day-to-day -day one, what we will be doing next week is we will go by departments. And if you notice the next meeting, we only have so many departments. Um, and then the last meeting, we have other departments. And then we have a final meeting that we can answer any lingering background questions. So on the next meeting, we'll have police, fire, and dispatch. The others will not be attending, so we'll be able to talk. And that's the day-to-day -day working budget. So this is capital, those things that we spend money on to purchase or renovate or, you know, spend. Usually that's where the bigger dollars are spent on one time. So without further ado, we're going to go through the five-year Capital plan, um, Mr. Veras, aka Kevin, will be leading us through this with each department. Um, I've asked the department heads to be here because who better to answer or advise why they need X, Y, and Z. Um, hopefully we don't need any Zs. So without further ado, Mr. Veras, anybody want to give him a drum roll? Okay. Wow. Thank you. There'll be a lot of Z's because we're talking about boring stuff, right, Jess? So, um, <clears throat> all right. So we'll follow the agenda and police will be the first department we discuss. Um, what you have in front of you, though, is everybody. And the first page is the overall summary of... Sorry about that. Sam, sales calls. Um, <clears throat> And the, Oscar? the, so the bottom. You want an Oscar or an Emmy? Yeah, um, probably nothing lately. So your car warranty expired. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is your warranty expired? Is your phone? <laughs> yeah. How about your insurance? Or someday I'll play the one. I have a whole bunch in Japanese. I have no idea what they're saying. Oh gosh. All right. So sorry for that interruption. Uh, the second half of the first page, the bottom half explains how we're going to pay for what's in the columns. So as we go through this, um, and also on each page, we'll have a column for paid with cash or borrow and the, the fund number with the account line item to the left. So if we go to page six, which is the police page, um, we'll, we'll start there. And uh, <clears throat> not a lot happened in, in 2021. Uh, we can recap what we did so far this year. Uh, spent 3000 on MDTs, mobile data terminals. You guys just approved the 800 radio system, which we're borrowing 200 of the police's share and paying cash for 33000 of it. And then we got a new Chevy Tahoe, which we paid cash for. And those last three items are coming out of the safety service fund, as you'll see to the left, uh, fund 280, line item 2225901. And then anything in yellow, if you look up at the top right-hand corner of each page, it tells you what the yellow means, the planned capital program. So I'll be putting together a summary of that, anything for 2020, because that'll be the first year that we have items in the planned capital program. Um, 
that you know we've you passed that resolution that states once a year I'll update you on the status of items in the plan capital. So we will be putting aside eleven thousand dollars for three years. This year being the first, next year twenty twenty one being the second year, and that final payment will be coming out of Fund two eighty as well. And then down below we have some other police funds that we do at times spend money out of depending on what comes into those funds. Those are the uh, drug offense fund, the law enforcement education fund, and federal equitable share. Chief Golden maybe can explain <clears throat> where some of the funds come from uh, for those three funds, but it's hard to budget for those because it's always based upon uh, you know, if they arrest somebody or if they're involved in some kind of a special case, that would be the federal equitable share. Um, so we, we, those are pretty conservative low numbers because we don't know what is going to be coming in. John, do you want to say anything about those three? Yeah, that's, that's correct. correct. Most of them are based off of arrests. This has been a slow year. So you can't project uh, large revenue from those funds this year, but yeah, they are based on different operations that we have. Um, uh, I can't remember what the first fund was you mentioned. A drug offense. Yeah, I mean, that's relatively simple. It's any drug arrest that we make, we get a portion back from Stowe Court. So they're all arrest dependent as, as I understand it. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, so that's basically, you know, where we're at for police 2022 is the, is the big year where we're going to be replacing 10 cars. Uh, you see that in purple. And if you go to the front page in purple in 2022 down at the bottom, you'll see that that's where the 475,000 comes from. And um, it states on that line back on page six that it's going to be a lease buy, you know, lease to buy uh, agreement for 10 cars. So we'll own them after the four year lease and most likely trade them in, right, Chief, on the next set of 10 cars. That's always the best bet is you get the most money when you trade them in. And then. Uh, <clears throat> Up above, you see some MDTs that we're going to be planned capital for the next three years, starting in 2022, and some dash cams that we're going to be setting money aside for as well, uh, starting in 2022. That's about it for police. Um, dispatch is kind of intertwined with police and and fire, so I don't know if you want to mention anything right now, Chief Golden. Well, we used to have a, a separate line item for dispatch. Um, we're getting the updates this year in dispatch with the new console uh, put in there, and we have the new uh, 800 radio system. So um, we used to have a line item for dispatch, um, but we never did any major upgrades in there, so to speak. Okay. So do you think we've captured any? I mean, obviously this year we have. Anything you see going forward in the next definitely next year or a couple of years after that relating to dispatch? I mean, we're talking about uh, opening up dispatch. Brian and I were, were looking at that, um, removing the bathroom in there and giving them a little more space since there's going to be three positions in there. Um, but other than that, you know, not offhand. Okay. So I guess we can also go to page nine that the police station general um any upgrades to the station itself within city hall uh, and, and you could see for this year you know we I, I created a general upgrades line for for every area of city hall just so we're thinking about I mean, it's it's a large home basically, and and if you don't 
if you don't update your home on an annual basis, things tend to fall apart eventually. So each year we'll set aside a certain dollar amount just for general upgrades. But specifically in 2020, we were doing the interview room upgrades and jail cell upgrades. And Chief, you can update us on where we stand with those two. Uh, the interview room, we're, we're uh, getting a quote on a counter in there. I'm going to need to talk to building and uh, Mr. Nadevanch about some upgrades in there. Um, the booking room, we're looking at a new system in there, I believe. But I think we got that already, didn't we, John? Yeah, that was yeah, that yeah. was last year. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, but we're we're looking at uh, doing some changes, moving things around in the booking room right now. Okay. And I need to talk to building and and the other thing. The uh, as for the police side in general. Um, the carpet in my office is original. It has waves in it. It has tears in it. Uh, somebody dropped off a board with uh, different uh, uh, flooring material that they were looking at putting in the police uh, basement because the tiles are coming up. I think Steve left that in my office to kind of sort through. I think the carpet's original in the lieutenant's office, in the detective office. Um, so we might want to look at that. I know the hallway's got scrapes and gouges in it from years i don't think it's ever been addressed since uh since we put the built the building so uh, there's some that's a more of a minor type thing but flooring might need to be looked at okay and we do have a line item for that where we're starting to put money aside next year five thousand a year outside of the general upgrades um men's now see I don't, with the twenty thousand for this year chief the jail cell upgrades Mm -hmm. I don't think we've spent all that, and okay. we have another ten thousand for next year. So keep that in mind. It, yeah. it's, and then twenty five thousand, as you and I mentioned um, during the meeting when we met, men's locker and lunchroom upgrades. Yes. That that's what we're talking about. Flooring, the tiles are coming up in the men's locker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we have twenty five thousand set aside for that for next year. Right. And interview room is different than the booking room, right? Or same yes, thing? Yes, it's different. different. Yes. Okay. So we have 7,500 upgrade for that for next year. Yeah, we're hoping that WatchGuard, the system we have in the cars, comes out with their uh, a camera system that everything will work together, that we can give one disc or one, um, one link with everything on it, the reports, the infield uh videos and the station uh video so we're hoping that we haven't developed it yet but we're hoping they're coming out with it shortly okay all right uh council you have any questions regarding the police station and their capital needs yes i'd like to ask the chief uh how much we're getting back on the return in the grants for the bulletproof vests are, are, are we covering that or do we still need to subsidize that every year uh john may know better i know we get a percentage and uh, i think we get five vests every year uh, i'm not sure how much is covered by the feds on that john do you know i, I can find out for you Vinny. yeah the city uh, I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate that i'd like to know exactly what we're getting out of them for those okay mm. If you could send that to all of council. Yeah, I will. We'll be aware. Yeah. Any other questions for the chief? Yeah, These, thank uh, you. This men's locker room upgrade. That's something that we talked about like in 2015 with the future growth committee. Is that still rolling over? We still haven't gotten to that. So <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad to see it. it's on there. That we could finally have, you know, a locker room and a lunch room that is suitable for, for these folks. So thanks yeah, for getting well, that taken care of and ready in the budget for next year. Thank you. It's good to have a plan that you can look at. Yeah. It makes sense. We've been looking at it. We've been looking at it and we've been looking at it. <laughs> but this plan tells you how you're going to pay for it. So fire you you're up next and fire is on page four so in 2020 for a fire 
we have a miscellaneous item capital needs 10,000 um, that again that's the concept that I started to make sure we at least have some money put it put aside for miscellaneous stuff and then you see the 375 which we're borrowing um, and will be paid back out of fund 280 for the balance of the radio system update or communication system as they call it um, we called it in the uh, 575 thousand dollar piece of legislation when we borrowed them the money um, in 2021 this is i think chief the 50,000 one of the deferrals that we made from this year yes okay yes that's replacing the the assistant chief's vehicle which is an old police car which i believe is a 2014 with don't quote me like 105,000 miles on it starting to have okay. some issues did that and come then uh, and, from Mayberry? Pardon me? Is it the one from Mayberry over by the no. restaurant? <laughs> they have one down there if you'd like. I'll bring it home. <laughs> and then next year we start setting money aside for replacing the utility pickup, which is a 2000 Ford excursion. Wow. Really? 2000? 2000. Wow. It's got 185,000 miles on it. It's a diesel. It was built for the long haul, uh, but it is getting tired. I would think so. Uh, turnout gear, six sets per year. Um, so it's not really a planned capital because we're buying them each year, but that would come out of the uh, safety service fund. The utility pickup would come out of capital, which those funds come from the general fund via a transfer. Um, the SCPA air compressor. Now, Chief, you could, we keep moving this because we think we, it doesn't need to be replaced. At, but at some point, you think maybe it does. Well, so we're, I did some more research. Um, our air packs are approaching 10 years old. Um, we're, we always apply for grants for them. And unfortunately, our air compressor only goes to 5,000 PSI. And the latest air packs that are coming out now function on 6,000 PSI. So we will have to replace it. I don't think the price tag will be $100,000. Um, but I have not gotten any firm quotes on it at this point. And that okay. also going back. Your intent back. is to have that in 2021, though, right? So we can go with the new technology and the Correct. better technology. Correct. Okay. Um, then going back to the right. turnout gear, when John and I originally talked about that, I think it was last year. Um, since then, the state bid's a state bid item, and the thought process is we're buying six because turnout gear is only good for ten years. So if we buy six every single year, that will get us ultimately in the end. Every firefighter will have two sets of gear, which is an industry standard. The point being is, if they go on a fire. And it may be a mutual aid fire early in their shift. Their gear has to be washed before they can wear it again. This gives them a second set of gear to wear. And then we don't get hit with a huge, hey, we have to replace 25 sets of gear this year at $3,000 a piece. We're doing a little bit at a time. The year paperwork all says 15,000 new bids came out. And it's actually about $3,000 a set right now. So we really need to update up that to 18,000. And I appreciate that you're putting in here the expected life of the various products that we're purchasing. I have an anticipation when we replace the air compressor. You said ours right now is 10 years old. What is truly the expected time? No, no. Our air compressor was actually purchased by uh, Chief Gerstenberger, okay. and his tenure was 1989 to 1992. I was going to say that's it's 30 what years your, what's your anticipated life of the new one 20 to 25 years okay as long as technology doesn't change well that happens every year right so I'll, I'll put 25 years in the column under expected life I'm glad you mentioned that Jan because I was going to point that out too 
about the co the column that shows how long we expect these assets to, to last. And so in 2022, you see we're going to be buying a rescue squad that replaces a 2002, which lasted. Pretty simple math. Yeah, 20, 20 years. years, but we have 10 years in the expected life. So I'm wondering why we have 10 years. That's why I was hesitating. Well, because we replaced it eight years ago. That is that is correct. We, we we have everybody in this room knows that we've all we're always strapped for cash. We're strapped for capital and things get kicked down the road and kicked down the road. And we put another few thousand dollars in it to keep it on the road and we keep going. <clears throat> But the 2022 is going to be nearly 20 years old when we replace it. The 2002. Uh, 2002, I'm sorry, is going to be, in 2022, is going to be 20 years old. Yes. But it's better planning to change them out every 10, is what you're saying. Okay, yes. so if you look at the 350. Yeah, for future planning, because right now, if I look at last year versus this year we're, we're going down in money so we can put some money in the bank and then we might have you're saying lease buy we'll have the money to do that so chief we're okay to get through this year and then next year we'll have a new one and then kind of like we did with the service cars you know and the police cars we put them on a so many year plan of lease so we know we always have something new in the parking lot. Right, and then there's other thing that, just as a reminder, I guess more for the new council people, we do bill for EMS, um, and I don't have it in front of me. We just got a report through September. The city's brought in somewhere around $200,000 so far this year from EMS billing. That's what we have received. So, you know, you can make a case for the working capital of the ambulances is, can be supported by that. I mean, I know there's a whole lot more that goes into it, salaries and stuff like that, but um, we are bringing in funds to also recoup that. And also, <clears throat> John, in 2021, you missed the um, planned capital for the cots. And I did some more research on that. We have three power load cots. Um, and the estimated cost on those at this point is uh, about $21,000 per cot. But they, we will have trade-in value in what we have. Um, the life expectancy is a shot in the dark. I mean, it's a, a moving mechanical object. How many calls does it go on? You know, what's the wear and tear? It's kind of like your automobile, only there's no odometer on these for lifts. So um, right now they're, they're working fine, but it's also an item that we can't afford to fail with a patient on, as you can imagine. So you want to bump that to 15 a year? Uh, I think that would be prudent. Okay. All right. And then the last item is the 800000 in 2023 for a new fire engine that replaces the 1999 unit. And can, it would we be a about, can we talk about how are we assisted at all in having our district in buying capital purchases, or is that only for manpower? Um, we're, each township main, owns and maintains their own equipment. Um, what it does do is, is, at this point, it's probably helping the townships a little more than us, simply because each just they each just have an engine, and we are able to move them around um, when there's maintenance. Um, for us, there's other things such as um, we have a boat, they have a newer, better boat, but we also picked up the falls and the river, which we're partially responsible for. Um, so under capital, we get it because of our buying power. We're getting better pricing um, on some of our equipment. Um, example, we're buying a squad in 2022. Sagamore has one on order for delivery in 2021. And last year, Northfield Center bought one. So 
We become a higher volume customer with the squad manufacturers, which gives us gives us a better price. Um, the radio system, we got a 3% discount because of the volume we were doing. So it's in things like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so go ahead. Uh, Chief, so uh, back to these ambulance cots, you are projecting currently they cost 21000 each. Correct. So if you put away 15000 for four years, it only gets us up to 60000 won't they cost more than sixty-three thousand four years oh, from now? Yeah, but we will have trade-in value on the cots when we trade them in. Okay, so going going off of today's prices is not that far off. Correct. Okay, so we're going to amend line the ambulance cots to fifteen a year instead of ten. Correct. Okay. Uh, correct. And the, the and the turn mm-hmm. and the turnout gear to eighteen thousand a year and we don't have plans for this 2011 unit yet we're just going to let that go till after 2024 the squad yeah if you look to the left jess it's in 2027 yeah and a little so that's why i left it on there just so we know oh Uh, so we're still paying on it no we're not paying on it um but if if you see it last <clears throat> 10 years and we're going to replace it every nine because you see the 2002 and the 2011 are being replaced 2022 and 2027 so um, we are planning for that to be a, a borrowed item in 2027 for five years Okay, so it's part of the plan to, as soon as that uh, replacement for the 2002 unit drops off, we'll get, we'll replace the 2011 unit. Yeah, and we'll, we'll right. start, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so one, two, three, three more years, it'll show up on the five-year capital plan in 2027. As a single line item at 350, but it'll probably change to... 375-ish by then. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, I, I have a simple one. Um, are all the ambulances ours and none of the communities in the district bought ambulances? They just bought engines? Nope, they have their own. They each have two ambulances also. Okay, so do they put cots in their ambulances or are we putting cots in yes. their ambulances? Nope. Okay, that was, un- that was three, three ambulances. That are ours. Correct. Okay, perfect. So, I was confused. Just to clarify, all equipment is supplied by each entity, including everything that's within the fire truck or the, yeah. It's so it wouldn't, entity. but that wouldn't uh, go yeah, down to like it's, the it's, turnout gear, right? The staff that we're providing yeah. to staff those other departments, are they buying well, that? Well, actually, the townships, I'm going to be asking the townships to also each purchase three sets of turnout gear. Oh, okay. Per year. Good to, good to know. So they are responsible for staffing that, uh, okay. outfitting that staff also. So, Chief, do they each have a fire engine? Yes. Do they each have an aerial tower? No. And they don't share an aerial tower cost? Correct. Okay. Just so we're all on the same page. Well, John, you know, the history here is we, we had a tower since 1991. And since 1991, that tower has gone to every fire in Northfield Village, Northfield Center, and Sagamore on a mutual aid um, request anyway. It would have gone even if we weren't a district is what you're saying. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay, so they don't, have to, they don't have to buy one so because we buy it is what you're saying. Well, Correct. Or, um, That's the way the cookie crumbles, man. <laughs> Imagine the paperwork. If, if it... If it, if, you know, if the district broke up, the paperwork would be crazy if they put money into our aerial tower. Boston well, worse, worse than that, if there was an issue, they can claim ownership of some type. And the chief explained to that that to us, um, I think even in the last council meeting or the one before that, that the reason we don't do that is uh, ownership is ours. If, if, if this fire district breaks up, 
that is still ours. Nobody can claim, and nobody else can claim ownership to that piece of equipment. Is that not correct, Chief? Yeah. That's the way the district was set up, that the yes. equipment remained each individual community's part. Does Boston Heights have a tower? No. no. I didn't think so, because they don't have any really big buildings other than Costco. We're actually very fortunate. Twinsburg actually has two. Hudson has one. Brexville has one. Oakwood has one. So gosh forbid we need them all, but we have them. That's a Correct. good thing. And also keep in mind that there's going to be things down the road. I mean, this consolidation is truly in infancy. You know, we just passed four years. We're going to identify and work to replace. And we've all been learning. Um, the townships will make capital purchases that we won't have to to enhance our service. Um, comes to mind is uh, per currently Northfield Center has an extensive amount of rope rescue equipment. Why is that? Brandywine Falls. We have some. We do have some ledges in our center. So we won't have to make a capital expenditure on those items because we'll be able to just call that, you know, they'll come over with that equipment. So that's where we'll get into that sharing with the capital. So that's where we will benefit. Okay, so if we're done with the, that page, we could go to page nine for your general city hall upgrades for your department. And on page nine, Chief, we just have the general upgrades line of 5,000 a year and carpet flooring for 10,000 a year. Correct. You, know, you, mentioned, you mentioned something about the kitchen, but Right. I don't know why we didn't put anything in there. Yeah, I know we talked about it. Right. Um, and we pro and we probably do. I mean, that, that kitchen, the history there is when the building was built, it was a, a empty room. Um, it was it was tiled and there was an HVAC unit hanging. And that was it. The firefighters, both on and off duty, built the walls, drywalled, finished the drywall. Um, Lieutenant Davis ran all the electrical, blah, blah, blah. City purchased the cabinets, the firefighters hung the cabinets, installed the countertops and all that stuff. Um, and so it's I, think, 20 I, I think it's something that could come out of the safety service fund and maybe next year and the year after you wanna put some money aside? Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. What do you think, 15 each? Yes. Yeah, take a look at it for not this year. Not 2021, but in the future. Right. If we do 15 see. each, then right. you could do it in 2022. Or beyond, depending. Yeah. Depending on where we go this year. Right. Anything else for the chief? Where are we sticking at? What, what line item on are page we sticking nine. At? Right. K kitchen update. Fifteen thousand. Okay, so we're, sticking, we're sticking that under kitchen update. Fifteen thousand and yeah, fifteen thousand and twenty-one and twenty-two. Okay, thank yeah, you. That's not this year, so it won't be no. in this year's budget. No. All right. Thank so you. the service department is next. What page are you on, John? What's that, John? What page are you on? Well, you want to do service or uh, park end of it first? Seven well, or well, let's do seven first. Yeah. Great. Okay. Is that page seven in our hymnals? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it's on the back side of page six. Yep. <laughs> so, so this year. Um, we did the uh, there's a maintenance contract and this is what John was talking about early on before we started at six. So you're you're saying to change these dollar amounts. Cancel no. 23. Well, don't cancel. Remember, we're going to extend it. The contract was for three years. OK, we'll be able to renew it. So that's why we just extended out knowing that we were going to continue afterwards. 
Okay. So I did look it up. It was for three, but it allows the laser grading to come sooner. But it was written that way. 16.5 still good? Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, <laughs> Who have we outsourced that to? That is through the, uh, the, uh, the company that installed the fields, uh, Home Field Athletics. They have an, it's called an assurance program. They come out each year and evaluate the fields and will bring us material if needed, all part of this um, kind of insurance cost, if you will. Uh, for maintenance of the fields after each use, after each season. Thank you. Okay. And then trails, uh, <clears throat> since I arrived here, uh, it was talked about that money should be set aside for trails to improve the trails in the park. So we're setting aside 20000 a year um, for that purpose. Um, this year we did Windmill Lakes driveway for $62,500, um, and we're setting aside for a planned capital program the parking lot, which by current agreement with Windmill Lakes, we're responsible for. Um, so that's a planned capital item over a four-year period starting in 2020. Can you explain how much money has having the new people again? That's our property. Um, in the will, it was agreed upon. Colonel Long basically put it that it could be used, only so many acres could be used for profit. And if, if for some reason they're not there, because that's our property, it reverts back to us. So the agreement was that we had get so much money from originally it was called salt mills. Now it's windmill, but that's still our property. So for some reason, God forbid, they go under, it comes back to us. And then there's also a little someday I'll, I'll have to have Mark talk about the fact there's also with the Y and the Y property because it's next door. And so it all gets to be kind of convoluted, but that's why we do a lot for windmill because we truly still own it. We don't own windmill. We don't own the golf course, but we own the property that it's all being run on. John, I have a question. Okay. Um, which, which John? Uh, uh, finance John. Okay. <laughs> you said on trails that were um, taking twenty thousand dollars a year across the board, but in twenty twenty three we got twelve thousand. Is that just a typo? No, add add to twenty eight for, for twenty twenty four, and it averages out to twenty a year. Okay, just rough idea. What does that cover? Is that cutting new trails that don't exist, or just maintaining the existing trails that are out there? That's, that's a lot. That oh, go ahead. The, sorry. Oh, go ahead, John. No, go ahead. That's okay. No, sorry. Through the Parks Commission, there's been a lot of conversation. In the past, they would make decisions, and, and it really it, it never held weight. So now they're holding weight, and one of the things they want to concentrate on those trails. So mm -hmm. some of the things that were coming out of there, and, and I'm sure Ms. Brandt could give better explanation than I, but you know, identifying the trails, how long they are, having proper signage right. back there, maintaining them, having proper drainage. Yep. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that. I mean, we've made a lot of headway back there, but there's still a lot to do, and it'd be nice to know when you walk into the trail that, where yeah, this at. trail is a mile and a half and here's right. the shape of it you know and that's yep. the little things I, that take time and money and I'm, the only reason i'm asking is i literally walked them for the first time like two weeks ago and i was blown away by how wide they are and how clean they look yep. so this is great the and one main trail we made that wide for emergency services if they had to get back there for anybody oh, so right. they could take their ambulance back there if needed nice okay. part of our plan too is also to bring the trails out of the woods get some hard surface trails going out into the park for people you know uh, better accessible handicap accessible uh, stroller accessible easier to walk on i don't know if you've ever noticed when you go to longwood there's lots of people literally walk on this on the driveways there terrible so we're, we want to put some of this money towards bringing the trails out of the woods and uh hopefully that'll that'll help cover it if not cover it completely <laughs> I don't yep. know how much asphalt costs, but but that's that's what it is. It's not just twenty thousand dollars a year for signs. 
Right. No, no, it makes sense. Like even, I don't even know if it's an option or an intention, but like the backside of the lake, it's a trip hazard the whole time you're walking back there. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's part of what we're, we're getting into. So that's what we hope this uh, $20,000 a year really help bring, bring more people into the park to do different parks. Cool. One of the thoughts we'd had, and this is eons ago, because we used to go to Broadview Heights for soccer, the Macedonia team with their trails were unbelievable. But we also own, we still have the park goes into Shepherd Road. But it's all been overgrown. But we've always thought about why don't we put a parking lot there and there could be a back way into the trails for those people who don't want to deal with the rest of, you know, baseball or anything else that's going on. But that's now overgrown. But that's something else we can take a look at for the future. Well, that's a utility easement back there. And I know we've kind of brought it up to John quickly about talking to the utility as to what we're able to do with that land. I don't know how much we're able to to put permanent structures over there. Um, I have a question about windmill. The the parking lot, uh, when do we expect to actually do that work? Do we do that work already? And that's or we won't start it till 2023. We, we already did the drive in. The parking lot is is in desperate need of repair. And I think we kind of touched on this in the council meeting previously, but we're, we're going to have to do that by the agreement that was struck years ago. It states that we are responsible for that, and it, it's coming to a head over there. It's breaking up pretty bad. So um, I actually was supposed to meet with them on Monday. I think we're going to postpone that for seven days. Um, but once we go and talk to them, we're going to try and – Look at the, the the agreement in place currently and, and renegotiate because I'm not real crazy about the agreement that's in place. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that and see what we can do. And what's the number on that currently? Like 41, 45 a year? For or lease agreement? Uh, well, that's part of what uh, Mr. Varis and I have been digging into. It, it's a little bit convoluted. And there was addendums. So we're actually in the process of figuring that out. We're, we're not 100% sure right now. But once we get that together, we'll have a better idea because, again, I don't know what deals were struck in the past or when they even took place, but that's why we're digging back into it. All right. The the uh, park, the committee will like to know once you get that settled and figured out, they hold on to that number, that lease, because it kind of all belongs to us. So as soon as you get that hammered out, let us know. Sure. No will problem. do. Okay. So continuing with page seven, we have a pickup schedule for 2022. And this might not happen in 2022, but we have a number there for ball field, field C, and that's lighting, right, Mayor? Correct. The intent was to carry on with what we've done and, you know, hopefully we can get another grant to, to help support that. But that's the thought that we continue on with the improvements at the ball fields and make them a lot nicer than they were. So we'll be in contact with NOPEC. I think we know one of the board members. I think you do. I know two. <laughs> and that would just be for lights, right? I know two of them. The field is uh, the field itself is good, all ready to go. That would just be two fifty for lights. Correct. Yeah, and we also talked about you know starting to put benches and and um, awnings over them because it's in direct sunlight and maybe some trees around there. So there's a lot of talks about things in the future that we'll be bringing to the committee to discuss further. All right. So John, your next page is page eight. Yep. Uh, so 2020, we're looking into this right now. We're, we're getting quotes on two single axle dump with uh, attachments. It might end up being slightly higher than the 175 each, but uh, our plan is to replace, well, borrow that money and it replaces current debt that we're paying for lease to buy equipment that's 167,000 per year okay. that end, ended in 2020. So numbers we got for, uh, the quote, we got one of the three quotes back. It would be an 88,000, rounded up to 90, uh, payment over five years combined for, for both vehicles, right, John, with all equipment? Uh, with the equipment, yes. And these, these are would be these, used year-round, right? Yeah, year-round. These are, uh, the trucks we're looking at are hook lift trucks where the dump body actually comes off and then we can have a salt spreader 
come on for the winter time. By doing this, we'll eventually lower the cost of trucks that we buy in the future because those implements on the hookup trucks can stay with us, and then we're only buying cabin chassis in the future for replacement vehicles. And these would be F seven fifties. Yes. Okay. Yeah, slightly smaller than our our current trucks we have on the road, but offer the same payload. Uh, so, um, but all in all, for all intents and purposes, same plow size and everything stays on, holds the same amount of salt. We're trying to go more of a uniform of vehicles because we have a hodgepodge right now. We have four different manufacturers in our of trucks in our garage that we have to work on. And so, those are also stainless steel, correct, John? Yes, yes, so they, they are. Literally, should last it forever. Yes, they yes. Every implement would, will be on in stainless steel. Is the intent to get the other bids in so we can get this approved and purchase begin before the end of the year? Oh yeah, um, we should get the. One one company actually sent an email late today and said, and it was Chase Bank, and they said, oh, sorry, we're not in that business anymore. And so I'm waiting on a reply from Key Bank. He, he, he replied today and said, I'll get you the numbers uh, as soon as possible. So we should be getting Key Bank's numbers here shortly. Who was the first one? The uh, first one was Huntington. I keep getting calls from them that my account's been hacked. Oh, you know, not by I us. Have, I don't have a Huntington bank account. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Well, they give me an 888 number to call, and I get, so I look it up online. Huntington's number is nowhere close to what they give you. So it's like, okay. Wire them $10,000 to make your account current. All right, that's right. <laughs> so the question would be, if we get this done, how long does it take to get these ones the money's in the bank and we approve it. I was supposed I to get a response to today. Yeah, I was supposed to get a response today on that and I did not get a call back from the vendor because these for the first time in a long time, these are actual trucks that are building to our specs. If you recall last time I went to council for the last two trucks that we bought, they were bought off the lot. So we were just buying with whatever manufacturer had built their additions on, whether it's uh, their body implements. This is actually from, to our specs, what we want, so we could be more uniform. I was hoping to find out today, but uh, we're not able to reach out to you to give me an estimated time. So, is the plan to use them for this winter season, or to have them for the spring or later? All right, look to have them in the springtime okay. at the latest, because they would have to be built, which would obviously take mm -hmm. time. Okay, yeah. right. And keep in yeah. mind that we we've already budgeted for this for twenty, so this was already budgeted for and approved. We're just a little behind the eight ball, and we were being cautious because of everything right. going on. Makes sense. And, and then since it's a $167,000 annual debt service being replaced by an $88,000, $90,000 one, John, you, if you want to talk about the replacing number one um, in 2021, so we could get a total of three. Right now we're spreading that over three years and wait until 2023, but Basically, if you added another forty-five thousand, we'd be at one hundred thirty-five annual debt that you know, compares to one hundred sixty-seven dropping off. Mm -hmm. you know yeah, we, we were looking at yeah, we we're looking at twelve originally. I thought. You oh, were. twelve. Okay. Or twelve originally. That's the low pro. Okay. Uh, Two thousand nine. And one is actually a tandem axle. Yes. Okay. And twelve is a single axle. Yes, it is. Okay. So. Council, if 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 you're following along, we could replace twelve sure, in is. in 2021 and have a hundred thirty five thousand dollar annual service debt service that was one sixty seven. That could be a possibility to get three of them. How many total do we have that we use eight? We use eight. We have 10 total. Okay. But not, Trucks. not all of them are multi-use and all year, all year round, right? If we need them to be, they are, they serve as backups. If we have a breakdown so we can have another truck out on the road. No, no, no. I mean, not all of them have, um, have a lift, right? Well, none of them, none of them. Yeah. So Maybe. they're all dump trucks. They're all plow trucks. So, so basically they sit around when they're not being used as pop trucks. 
or not used as di for ditching for our, our storm water. You know, not every truck's being used all year round, though. No. Right. So we try to cycle them around to get use out of them, so they're not sitting all summer long. So if you had three of these that you can use all year round, that'd mm -hmm. be helpful. Yes, it would. Okay. All right. So um, zero turn mower. I think you ordered those, right? Yes. And then we have a bucket truck we're setting aside forty one thousand this year and seventy nine next year. Do you think that's still a good hundred twenty to buy in twenty twenty one? So far, it's still a good price because I just received some bad news today that we have a crack in the fiberglass bucket of our current bucket truck. Don't think that that is something you can just patch and go on. So we may have it, we have to look at replacing that entire bucket on the unit. So it is currently down. That is a good price you, for this. So is that the 96 Ford? Yes. Okay. Um, what were you doing in the bucket to crack it? <laughs> Why is it always got to be me? What are you, what are you saying? <laughs> I'm saying there's a weight limit in that bucket is what I'm saying. Can't you just get the so chief to bring the ladder truck we pass the It would be nice. If we had this, <laughs> when we pass the 2021 20, budget and that 79000 is approved, you can order it right away. Is this another thing that will take six months, or is it something you can get quickly? Uh, you can buy, you get those off the lot. Okay. The, the That's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, you could get it in January. Order it today. Can't order it till we approve the uh, budget. Nice try. Can we get anything back on that, John? The old one by selling it to a smaller uh, entity? And try to. I mean, it's a '96 with a bucket certification as of right now, and I, like I said, just happened today, so I don't even know what the cost would be uh, for something like that. Does that I'm, have to go on the auction page, like we do equipment? It would, unless uh, we'd look at trade in also and just do a comparison. That might be better. Mm -hmm. How much is just the bucket? I, I'm not sure. It just happened today, so um, I wasn't able to find out because my first call was to the company that certifies and left them a voicemail to find out if it's something that I'm guessing you can't patch it, but I just wanted to raise that question to see, being that it's fiberglass, could it be relined or not, or if the bucket had to be replaced, so I'm not sure right now. I'm trying to find out. I heard, I heard duct tape works. <laughs> John, do you have data on the leaf backs and the vac truck? You have like the ages of the leaf backs. Yeah, which and one do you want to know? Our the ages oldest. of the two leaf backs and the and the expected life of those, and then the combo vac truck age. There's no real expected life per se on the leaf machine. I mean, we generally we sit roughly twenty years. We can get out of them. You know, it's because they are. Them? Them. What's that? How old are they? They're fairly um, new. Yes. Uh, our newest one's an 18. The one okay. before that's a 2013. Uh, then we have a 2006. And our oldest that uh, we just did a little bit of engine work to. Uh, but I do love that machine. It's a 95 that we purchased from Catawba Island. And it's it's been a fantastic machine still. Do we actually have four? Leaf yes. Backs? Yes, we do. Okay. And then what about the truck? How old is that? Which truck? I don't know. It says combo vac truck. That would be a new one we're buying. Oh, that's new. Okay. How much do you, how much do those go for, John? Uh, you're looking over four hundred thousand. Okay. Easily for a combo vac truck. What do you do with it? That's that's more than leaves, uh, or or is it even four leaves? No, or is that's that for ditches and. Drainage. Cleaning out catch basins, jetting uh, sewer lines, okay, culverts. So that would be a new service because we've never owned one of those, I assume, right? Correct. That would be a new service that we would be able to add to our services. Mm -hmm. We currently all, pay a company for that. It also has hydro excavation, so that's something that is a lot safer to do rather than sticking a shovel in the ground. So that's another benefit of having that piece of equipment and much, yeah. much safer. Yeah, we demoed is one. Um, when we did the dugouts, and we actually did that as a demo uh, for 
activating it. It did work great because we have the main uh, power line that comes off of 82 runs straight down the walkway to the transformer by the ball fields. That line was right where the dugout was at. And by hydro excavating, we were able to not hit it. So. Does this also have the back on it like the um, Summit Environmental? It's sitting at Crown Berkshire again. Yes, but we won't go there. <laughs> yeah, they're there again today. I love to watch those guys. They open the thing, they look in, they go, yeah, they put the top back on, they go sit in the truck for an hour or two or three or four. <laughs> but it's the same philosophy that uses that pump, mm -hmm. right? Which is a good well, thing. Have the, it works yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So being that that's a $400,000 machine and we're putting away $50,000, is this an eight years out? Type deal no, here's what I here's what I'm thinking, Jess. Uh, once we figure out what the new collection is for water M and E, um, we'll have a good sense of total annual collections under the new format, where we basically don't have to worry about unpaid bills uh, and billing people. I'm thinking that'd be 125,000 a year in revenue based compared to like 90 ish that we were collecting. So we can change that line and buy it at 400,000 in 2022, let's say, just as an example and borrow it over 10 years. So you're having a $40,000 a year payment that's being paid for out of water and money plus interest for the next 10 years so you you can get it sooner and spread out the you know the the debt service and it, it's going to last more than 10 years right john i hope so you would hope so i mean we have a so 15 year life use you know yeah so that's an option i, I, I can show that um instead well, of the 50 50 50 50. Don't we want to wait till we see what the real revenue is from the water M&E? Right. And then, that's, but then yeah. up it in 2022. Right. So 2021 is our first year of collection for water M&E <clears throat> under, the, under the new format of it being on their property tax bill. So next year, 2021, will give us two good years of, of data to go off of. So. I think it will last longer than 10 years. It's not made by Ford. Uh, <laughs> hey oh. I was waiting. <laughs> Fix or repair daily. I hope there are no Ford executives on this call. Okay. <laughs> or as my family has called them, fix or repair daily. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a um, continuing on this last item on the page is miscellaneous equipment for something that you know John might need. Um, just to have that there every year, small items that break, uh, a lawnmower here, you know, a push mower or whatever. A shovel fund for shovels. Shovel. <laughs> hey, John. John Nodovich. John yes. Nodovich. Mm -hmm. Would we ever go back to purchase and, and doing uh, sewer work again? You're talking about for, for property owners? Right. Mm -mm -mm. Just oh, asking. Sir. That's all. That's all done by the county. We don't touch that. Mm -hmm. Okay, just wondering. It was a service that we did to have when I bought this house and moved in here. Mm -hmm. That was a couple billion years ago. In Summit County sewers, um, they're pretty particular. If you start playing around with it and something happens, they're not going to help. Right. That's why we love to see them every, you know, why don't you get in the car, Mayor, and go down and bring them some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably sitting there watching uh, <laughs> movies. Oh, wait, football's coming on. They got that set up. Oh, yeah, Thursday night. we got to hurry up here. Um, so, John, you're... Uh... <laughs> Your your public buildings and lands. We have your your four buildings listed just because they exist. Thank you. So <laughs> we have no dollar amounts because we think we'd be throwing money away. Mayor, I don't know if you want to 
mention anything. We've talked about this a number of times, but that's why they're listed there uh, as a reminder that they exist, I guess. Quiet. Well, and I think for 2021, during 2021 itself, because the mayor has already talked about the previous mayors, put the idea out there. Then we have some meetings. Um, I don't think the public will be able to physically be there yet until maybe June, but that we can start talking about what the design would look like, what we're trying to go for, because the idea was put up there by the previous mayor. Folks are aware of it. Mayor Molnar has been putting it out again, and I think 2021 would be a good time to, I don't want to use the word advertise, but to put the knowledge out there. Edu educate. Yeah. I mean, that way they'll say, well, why don't you put money in here? And Mayor, my suggestion is show them pictures and estimates of what it would cost to fix versus the new, and I think that's a better selling point. I was going to actually start to begin that process, but I w I'm being delayed a little bit now, so I will get to that, I promise you. You're not trick-or-treating, are you? I am not. <laughs> I am not. I see. Well, I won't know if it's you if you have your costume on. I, I will be going nowhere. <laughs> Although you are taller than me. Uh, anything Mr. else for uh, You'd recognize him. Mr. Mm -hmm. Nadevich? Anyone? Anything else? Thank you. Okay. Thank you Parks, Parks and Rec. Uh, we'll begin on page three. Page three is pretty simple. We have uh, 25,000 a year for exercise equipment. Uh, last year's 25,000 was not used, correct, Jason? And we're going to be using that purchase order for something you're looking at for this year. That is correct, sir. And then um, we have copier fax for upstairs, downstairs that we're looking at possibly replacing in 2022. There's one upstairs and there's one downstairs. Cover up so. the, function. the exercise equipment. Is that not just the normal that people think about the treadmill and the bikes, but does that include everything in the weight? area that's all lumped in together right? it is and right now like we basically over the next several years we're going to completely turn over everything that is upstairs minus the treadmills the treadmills were the newer purchase back in 2018 and right. with what is there in existing we have finally completed a full inventory as well as research on past serial numbers and most of our equipment is anywhere from 12 to 18 years old and some of it they no longer even make parts for so we are at a we are essentially with some of the pieces we're exceeding the lifeline and we are excited about the future of getting some new stuff in there because technology has obviously changed just slightly in the last 18 years and um so we are, you know, I'm, I'm glad you guys all understood the humor there with the, with the technology. We have equipment these days that's coming out that you can track your workout on your phone while you're on a machine. And it's, it's time for us to get to the 21st century and get that going. So we're excited about it. It is going to be a project, though, over time, as you guys see. We're not just coming out and saying, let's spend $150,000 in one year and get all the stuff. Uh, we are progressing over time so we can have a diversified line of equipment. Are your treadmills expected the last 10 years? That's the life expectancy on here, but I only bring that up based on the ones that were put in, they work awesome. They replaced the other ones. The other ones were getting tired, but they were still working. And it's just, what do you put a life put on all the equipment that's upstairs? Well, every, this is where it gets really complicated. Every piece of equipment is going to be slightly different. It's just like a car. You can have, you know, as you guys were picking on Fords, I'm going to switch to Chevy. Let's pick on Chevys for a minute. You can have, you know, 10 different, you know, models of the same exact Chevy. And not all 10 of those vehicles are going to last necessarily for the 15 years they're expected to. So you have variants there. What we have discovered is we have not previously been on a PM program, which is a preventative maintenance program that should be going on quarterly. Because we weren't going on that, 
we need to now get that under control for our staff currently. So that's one of the big plans we're working on at the moment. We want to impact that for 2021. So essentially four quarters a year, we will have a company come out and do preventative maintenance with the pool inspection. For instance, a perfect example is our current treadmills. Uh, the motors should be getting blown out once a quarter on those, as well as the belts tightened, which uh, promotes optimal usage. And right now we don't have that being done. So that's one of the things we're going to be getting corrected for 2021. To answer your question about 10 years, one of the things we're going to do with all of the equipment is on a quarterly basis, we're going to track uh, each piece is a little different. Some pieces, it's the mileage. Some pieces, it's the hours that you track of usage on the equipment. Um, certain pieces get more usage because of their location in the facility. It might be in front of a TV that a lot of people like to watch sports on. On a quarterly basis, as we review that, we are going to start, whether it's quarterly or it's semi-annual, we don't know yet. It'll depend on the usage. We're going to move pieces of equipment throughout the, throughout the upstairs cardio area. So if you have five treadmills that are being used a ton, rather than them all aging out in a six year period of time, you move those to other areas, less used treadmills in. So now we keep a little more streamlined with our usage, and especially if we start noticing maintenance problems, we'll do that same thing. Thank you. Yep. I know my treadmill is going to have the maintenance because there's no way I'm going to fix it. I oh, one. I was. I have one in the house. There's no way. So. I thought we were going to bring you in to help us on that. Um, snow's coming. I'll be there. I almost came today. It's too uh, too dangerous to run outside with leaps on the sidewalk. You should come in tomorrow so you can see our new flooring as well. I'll do that after work. Yep. I didn't get to run today. It was too wet. And, and I guess that 10 years is more of an average because if you're buying dumbbells and, and weights, those are going to last a very long time. Yeah. Well, and then, some of that hadn't been replaced and uh, the previous director had replaced a lot of it and we expanded the type of equipment downstairs. Um, the treadmills, poor thing, they get in the wintertime, they get a lot of workout and in the summertime nobody comes in so it's like how many miles are on it and that's why your maintenance plans a good thing. And one more note to add to that, uh, Mr. Chaddock has also had a lot more analytics to show that, you know, we may not need, say, 12 treadmills. Maybe we need eight. So a lot of that's going to play into his future planning as well. So it could save us a lot of dollars. Could we possibly spread them out even further? That's why I don't go to Planet Fitness. It's a catch. Nothing worse so than being right next to somebody. It's so hot. It's detrimental to trying to work out. Have you been in the facility since we reopened? Ours is better than most that I've been like, to. They're six feet apart right now. We, I know. We would, Planet Fitness is. Yeah. Planet Fitness, you're on top of each other. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I highly suggest to the community the, the Macedonia Rec Center is a great place to work out. Shameless plug, guys. Shameless plug. <laughs> well done. <laughs> So if we move to page, page 10. Could you put these in order? <laughs> After tease, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> oh so on page, so on page 10, you'll see uh, in 2020, we have 40,000 for ball field bleachers and shade structures. And to date, Nadi, we've only purchased a bleacher. That is correct. Okay, uh, but we'll, we'll encumber the rest. And the mayor, I think, was talking about some shade structures. Uh, I think that's what you were referring to, Mayor? Correct. Okay. So, and then we have a line for general upgrades. And it, it, that's within the building. So that's inside. And then building renovations, 53,000. And Jess, this is the committee's 53,000. Um, to weigh in on, um, and that's mainly building renovations, you know, because that's the line. Uh, Twelve thousand of that, you know, it was a sixty-five thousand dollar line, and I split it because uh, Jason needed 
12,000 from this year's budget and we used an open PO from last year's budget to complete the second floor improvements, right, Jason? That is correct. And then we have a remodeling line for 15, um, which I think that's was 115, right, Mayor? And we reduced it by 100 as part of the uh, when COVID hit. Correct. That's a, a lot of those funds were going to be utilized for the family changing room, which, like we had talked about, taking a break from construction and also with COVID hitting, we were trying to be cautious. So we might want to put some money off to the right on that line because we were going to spend some money on the family changing room. I don't know about 2021, but maybe 2022. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are, Mayor, for family changing room. Because well, how does how does re, uh, building renovations and remodeling? How do those differ? Uh, they're different line items. Just the last digits, a seven instead of a nine. Um, the remodeling, the remodeling just was more. You know the major remodeling that we had going on for the last couple of years and then this was going to be the final piece of the major remodeling right. with the family changing room and it was going to be about you know hundred fifteen thousand we were estimating but we changed it to 15 to use for smaller items you're muted right now you're muted oh. That's so if we didn't use the family changing. I, I'm sorry, the 50, just go ahead. The 53 did or didn't get used this year. I, Jason, I'm, I'll I'll be talking to you about that real soon because we've yeah. got. I'll, I'll be talking with the uh, PRC about that because we have some current projects that we're looking at at the moment. Because like some of this building renovation stuff that we're that we go through, we have a lot of dated equipment we're a 20 year old building we have pool pumps we have pool filters obviously we have a hot tub item going on right now and then plus as we continue we have more uh, more lighting through the building that needs replaced over time we have more flooring in the building that's going to need uh, replaced as we continue to go and that's not to say all in 20 or 21 that's, i'm talking progressively over the next four or five years okay so, so just have, that, fif that 15 you, might need to be used for the whirlpool um okay repairs but you have use within the building for this sixty five thousand, um basically separate from the family changing rooms and we're going to need to come up with a replacement for that hundred fifteen thousand for the family for the remodeling line to get these right, family right, changing right. rooms done. which i'm thinking maybe 2022 2023 50 thousand each for remodeling i don't i don't know it all depends on this COVID. i mean Who's going to bring a family in right now? Yeah, we don't even allow the uh, use of the showers and stuff. So right. it's true. So. That, that actually does give us time. The COVID does give us time to put off that project. But I also have a question about um, there's, and, and I kind of have a little bit of, of understanding about the elevator in the uh, part in the family or in the uh, rec center. I know it went through tons of stuff <laughs> last year. Or 2018 or not last year. Um, and the elevator kind of just is what it is, and you you fix it as it goes. And John Nadevanch might know more about how what's involved in elevator maintenance. I mean, does it just do you plan on do you set aside money to replace an elevator in the future, or do you just you just set aside money to have it fixed every time it breaks? There's no real plan as to far how much money you can put aside for the, the elevator. Um, I talked to that company a few years ago about the elevators. And what they told me is there's two different models. And we did not get the better of the two models, unfortunately. Um, so even when they looked at it for us as far as a replacement is concerned or what, or what we're currently doing with the repairs, we're better off with the repairs as needed uh, right now. So director, no Nottavans, you know. director Nottavans and I are going to be in the basement pulling the cable <laughs> up and down. Yeah, that's going to have to be one of your classes, you know. The Tuesday morning uh, elevator lifting. It is a rec center. Why don't, you know, that's why we have steps. Or we could do the pulley rope. Yeah. 
or the wire. We could teach. We have to have, I mean, we have so many seniors that are coming yeah. in there and we can teach time for are upstairs. People have to be able to have access to that second floor. So it, yeah. it was pretty rough that the elevator was broken last year. My mom was like, you know, I can't do anything at the rec center because all my classes are upstairs. So yeah, unless we could move some of the, until we have something reliable, can we move some of those classes down into the room that's downstairs? Well, no, it's not broken currently. It's, uh, yeah, it's working. No, but yeah. if we're worried about it. Let's well, it hasn't had a had a blip or a problem as far as I know since they got all that. It was like a long period last year that it was really messed yeah, up. Yeah. They had to do a ton of work on it. I was just wondering. I was just basically curious if there is a replacement plan for that, or if you just, you know, put it in your budget every year that that we need to have someone set aside to fix our elevator when it breaks. There was a proposal like that a few years ago, but one thing is the company that we talked to also we were able to persuade we are toward the top of their list when it comes time when we call them they come like when we've had issues at city hall never been an issue they're on the spot they would come somehow rec center was falling through the cracks on that so i had a meeting with them we hashed it out and since then i believe we've not had an issue with something that's gone wrong they've been out there quickly to fix it so, so john Baltimore, how much is an elevator Oh gosh, I'll try to find it. Lots you know, and lots exactly. and lots of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah, I can find the proposal that I got a few years ago for it, but yeah, it's you your know, eyes will the, open. Yeah. The price goes up and down. It goes, it goes up, up and down. down. Yeah. But you're 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 in the six figure territory, <laughs> Jeff. So okay. Gotcha. You can give us an update on um, you know, price, thoughts, target that if it's gonna be replaced. At the same time, perhaps we need to look at because they're both the same age almost for the elevator in city hall take a look at both we could use a ski lift <laughs> this well, let's, not jinx, let's not jinx it they're both working currently so let's just hope and <laughs> right. pray that our preventative maintenance is going to continue us on the path of perfect operation yeah. the elevator at city hall does not get near the use that the elevator at the rec center most okay. employees actually use the stairs were they made by Ford? <laughs> and again, Chevy. If, it, if it goes bad, you know, the chief could just bring out the aerial and we could and take care of it. by the way, Chevy makes <laughs> the aerial. Corvettes are awesome. Well, all the all the firefighters use the fire pole to go up and down, to, to go down, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Oh, so, Jeff, I meant to comment. I love you. I love your shirt. So what I'll do is I'll put 50... 50,000 on a remodeling line for next year and in 2022. And we'll leave it up to COVID to determine when and if we would use the money. That way we'll have it set aside. For and the parking future. lot resurfacing, I, I think we skipped that. That's 300 oh, yeah. pay cash. Yeah, well, I was starting in 2020. So, yeah. So okay. the, the parking lot resurfacing as you mentioned we had that budget for in 2020 we moved it to 2021 um so plan is to do it next year i guess in the sp spring start um looking at doing it early um it'd be part of the road program right mayor the bit yeah yeah it's yeah it, it's becoming a as we all know, we've been talking about this one for the better part of, I want to say a decade, but it's becoming a safety hazard and with the seniors coming in and out of that building and uh, Director Chaddock and I had a discussion about it too, that it's it's getting to a point where we can't ignore this thing anymore. It's really becoming a big problem. And it needs to be done, I guess, before uh, Spirit of Macedonia Festival, if we do manage to have it next year. We we hope. We hope. So I think that's a, that's it for you, Jason. That is correct, sir. So Any then we have administ administration, and um, we will go to page two. And <clears throat> we have the building and engineering area. In IT on page two, 
and um, the digital record retention and storage just an annual maintenance um, but we also have that there for discussion as to even a, a, a greater records keeping system Kyle are you on? yeah Kyle you're on um, and that's basically there for to keep to keep our mind on there's a lot of records that are not being retained they're stored just in their roles basically right yes um what the uh, currently what the building and engineering department does when they get um plans are they've they've been trying to get into the habit of scanning in the plans as they receive them now and putting them in the system but obviously with there only being two employees in that in that area that deal with the plans on a regular basis um, they haven't been able to go through and scan in all the old archival ones so if somebody requests a copy of something it gets scanned digitally and it gets added but nobody's actually gone through and and taking care of a massive massive backlog of plans that they have and i think moving forward it would definitely be advantageous for the city as a whole to get all of those scanned because i know sometimes those documents are uh, are falling victim to the elements or you know flooding or you know moisture and things like that so the quicker we can get them digitized the easier it would be for one those employees to pull those plans up and two for us to um, search them digitally instead of doing it the old the old fashioned pull out the roll and unroll 22 pages method yeah we've been talking about doing that for quite a long time but kyle when I we when, when we talk about changing the uh building software would that be a module say for something that the building software would tie into uh, there's there's two different ways to go about doing it. You either um, you either get a, a program that does it in house, or you get a program that integrates with normally on base is kind of your um, industry standard. They're the Kleenex of digital records management. So it would just be a matter of what uh, what software suite the building engineering department liked, and whether or not they had a module built in because. Uh, a software and a, and a platform like OnBase is great, but it may be a little larger than what we need here. Um, so that'll just be uh, during the the process of of testing out the candidates for the building engineering software. That'll be one of the one of the things that we'll look at and we'll. But it is judge possible to our, integrate the scans of the the roles, yes. if you will. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then All a lot right. of time, uh, what a lot of uh, cities and entities do when they have a large backlog of paper like that is um, they hire a company to come in, they bring in a big commercial scanner, and, and they actually scan and index it all for you, and then and then you import it onto your network. So that may be uh, a service that we, we may be looking at in, in the future to get rid of some of those those old plans and really clear up a bunch of old document storage. Okay. Uh, and then to finish off the building and engineering their vehicles, we're looking at replacing a Jeep Compass, and I'll get the years uh, of the vehicles that we're looking to replace and put those on here too. Uh, so one in 2023 and one in 2024 uh, with a Jeep Compass. I, I know Nino drives uh, the Dodge Charger right now. Yeah, those are all those are old hand-me-down police vehicles, and they're high mileage. And we're starting to put more money into these things than they're even worth. So that's the intention behind going. And I think we looked at some of the state bids, and the the Jeep compasses were were fairly reasonably priced, and they're very fuel efficient. So that's the suggestion. It doesn't have to be those, but that's something that they were considering for the future. And probably more user friendly with the back hatch area as opposed to a Dodge Charger. Yeah, if they have to do measurements and things like that, they all have that stuff that could fit in the back of them and it works out better for them. And believe it or not, outside of the police department, those vehicles are probably used more than any, even the service department. I think those vehicles are driven every day for most of the day. 
So, Mayor, was there not an option in the Ford line of vehicles? Uh, they declined to <laughs> offer us anything. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, are, they, they, are, they, Jeep, they, are Jeeps reliable? I haven't heard anybody say what Jeeps stand for. But I drive I drive a Durango. I just I rented a Jeep Compass once, and I'm surprised I fit in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might have been the earlier version, Jeff, because the newer ones are a little roomier. Okay. Uh, so then, um, uh, Kyle, the IT area here, uh, city website redesign. Again, that's a number where we want that down on paper because we know it needs to get done. Um, so if council wants to do it sooner than, you know, what we're planning here, um, we, we just wanted to put a number down in front of you for discussion. I know I've gone over quotes already um, with the previous director. They were up to like 22000 for a fairly premium one. 30000 is a good cushion. Um, and I think it's important that we wait to see what we get with all the department softwares that uh, yeah. Kyle's updating to to make sure whatever technology we get for the website. So I'm, you know, I've been waiting for the site to be updated for, you know, since 1998. <laughs> but I've been waiting even more since I've got on council. But, um, you know, I am willing to wait to to get the right thing because you really don't want to rush into. Because I, I, I think, you know, the next stage of our website is going to be, you know, very lots of technology, lots of good stuff that's going to help. Uh, us connect with the the residents and and you don't want to rush into that so I, I i trust that kyle's making all the right decisions and going in the right order to make sure that first the in the city we have all the department software ducks in a row and then go ahead and connect that to a web portal so i'm i'm not happy to wait for it but i'm i'm absolutely willing to wait for it and i'm glad that you guys are socking away money for it we're going to okay, get something okay. great what what do we do currently? Is this something we host in house on our own, or do we contract to have it hosted somewhere? Um, we have uh, we have hosting with a company. Um, it basically, we're just renting a VM that's running a a WordPress installation. Okay. So they they handle the um, allocation of virtual resources to me, and then I handle the um, WordPress environment uh, now. I so you're the sole guy doing all the updates, basically all the content creation. Yeah, okay. yeah, I put I put all that. Yeah, I put all that up there. Um, I know we are pretty dated with the website, but I have tried to refresh it as much as possible. I mean, obviously, um, a complete rebuild is is definitely the direction we want to go with, and I think that we want to go with uh, purchasing uh, a third party's framework instead of basically utilizing a theme on top of a, a free installation of WordPress. Um, and yeah, I think that that 30,000 will, will more than cover it, um, probably leave us a little bit of extra leftover so we can put it towards some, uh, some maintenance because with any of those um, platforms, we're gonna look at an initial cost, but we're also gonna look at um, a, probably a, a much higher yearly maintenance cost on it because right now we're just paying for the hosting there is no maintenance for wordpress right. which there is license licensing for most other you know gui based frameworks so cool so okay. i'll get you that site as quick as possible jessica but <laughs> i think it looks a little better now i think it's functioning a little better so right. maybe you've going in the right job. direction You've done a great job with what you have, Kyle. I really appreciate how quickly you're getting uh, updates up there and and how how you've done to refresh it. So I, it doesn't go unnoticed. But you know, I am ready. By the time by the time I have to run for re-election again, I want to be able to say like, you know, we'll we'll have a website soon. <laughs> soon. <laughs> soon. <laughs> so Kyle, you want to touch on that last line there, the virtual server network storage. Uh, yeah, that's just um, that's just some more money that I'm going to squirrel away because, as I'm sure Jeff can attest, 
technology and your your infrastructure and your your framework you you constantly have to squirrel away money for you know as soon as soon as you get servers and stuff and set it up you know they're they're already dated and old and and the more and more software we look at the more and more storage we're going to look at and the more and more storage we look at you know that's that's just more network attached storage that we need so especially um, if you're scanning all those documents right what was that especially if you're going to start scanning all those documents in the building department you're you're sanding yes. go through the roof yeah and i did i did make sure that we were that we were scaled out at about i think we're at about five or six times what i projected our capacity to be so we do have a lot of headroom on that um but we also have the ability to uh throw another virtual host up there to spin up a whole lot more storage so it's kind of like lego blocks we can go modular and we could we can add to it without tearing it all down now so okay. give me a piggy bank and i'll save my money <laughs> <laughs> so if we're done with page two we can move to page five which kyle has uh the top section um Page five uh, starts with the uh, IT solutions where we're setting aside 100000 a year uh, for these software upgrades for different company, uh, different departments. Um, and we tail it down in 23 and 24. Kyle, I'm, that's 450000 total. I'm thinking... We're conservatively on the high end. I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, we should be. We should be on the high end. Those are all. That's basically just earmarked for miscellaneous um, things like council software, things like uh, you know service department. If they if they look at adding some new functionality, um, covering basically any major software projects. I know court. Um, I'd really like to. I'd really like to work on. Uh, updating things for Scott down there in court, um, creating an online payment portal, I think is something that we, we should really have. So yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of projects, but um, I believe Avero had the estimate at over 700 and some thousand. So right. we're right. still, we're still well below that. And for, for a lot more, we're going to have a lot more than, than that initial. Thanks to um, you and the project manager we hired from independence. John's tooting his own horn, guys. Now, it, I do, I do really like, uh, I do really like getting to work with John. John, uh, John understands when I when I ask for money in the piggy bank, he understands, you know, the saving and the scrimping and and what you know what happens to to really rebuild uh, rebuild the infrastructure and and all of the digital offerings here at the city and and the mayor and you guys and council have been um, very supportive as well. So thanks, guys. So that hundred thousand isn't just software; it's everything, right? It's hardware, networking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maintenance, yeah, it's, uh, training. Maintenance. Yeah, licensing. The training Updating. from the different software companies. How is your networking going? Where Where are you in the stage of giving? It? I mean, networking was kind of your first goal, right? Yes, um, all the network switches have been replaced. Absolutely, all of them. Um, They've all been replaced. They're all gigabit based now. They all have PoE. Um, there's redundancy in place. Uh, there's battery backups in the in the server room. Um, as I've been coming across defective drops, I've been replacing them or, or working around them. Eventually, I will like to pull um, all new drops in the building. But uh, currently, the drops that are there are, are working. They're handling our load. They're handling what we need. Um, the switches were were huge, and those have all been all been upgraded. So, from a networking standpoint, locally inside the building, I think we're doing great. The only major uh, network related thing that I'd love to see moving forward is I'd love to see a fiber line that we own in the ground between our building and the rec center slash any other buildings that end up over on that other side of campus. But that's a that's a huge investment in its in itself so obviously that's a wish list thing so i'll keep my fingers crossed on that and then uh the second line there the mail room 
uh, biz hub, if you will. Um, we're planning to replace that in 2023. Okay. Uh, yes, and um, the nice thing about those units is we own those units um, with a uh, uh, monthly support contract. So basically, um, as they're willing to continue to support it and as they're willing to allow us to pay them to support it, uh, any hardware inside the machine, rollers, maintenance, all of that stuff is covered for the machine. So if we do find in 2023 when we buy the nice big workhorse for the for the mail room, if we find that the other one is still functional, it could end up in another department that maybe has a lower um, print uh, capabilities. And so it, could, it was, it's still hardware that as long as it's functioning, we'd be more than happy to put somewhere else and continue to utilize. But as they get older, you have to plan on them failing because it happens sometimes. Okay, and then the uh 20,000 in 2020 for the vehicle. That's a Durango we bought for City Hall. Um, anyone in City Hall that, well, we're not doing a lot of training this year, but uh, uh, Kyle, I think you use it to run between buildings, and I don't know who else uses it, but yeah, I believe it's I believe it's used uh, as a as an admin vehicle if groups of people from the administration need to go anywhere. I've been utilizing one of those. The chargers mostly just because I have tools and junk. <laughs> it gets oh. the interior a little more messy. Gotcha. And then uh, the other copiers, fax, biz hubs for mayor's office and finance. We have those on the schedule as well. But uh, again, as Kyle said, uh, as long as the ones we have that we own are still working and, and uh, Blue Technologies is willing to uh, replace the parts. Um, we'll we'll keep them as long as they're functioning. Yeah, reliably on those units, um, you can normally you should normally plan on shooting for about five to eight and a half years, um, using it at about you know seventy five percent of its capacity. So you know as a unit gets kind of handy down to smaller departments, then it can. Hopefully last about 10 years, but unfortunately, those copy machines aren't as durable as they used to be. So that's about the seven and a half to 10, 10 years tops is about your, your projected life on those. So if you want to go to page 12 and 13 and 14, we could go over those briefly. Um, to tell you the road projects that are coming up outside of the annual road program itself. Okay, before, uh, we, before we do that, yeah, um, Amanda, was there anything capitalized that council needs? I don't see us anywhere on this list. So before we go to the last pages, was there anything that was required within council work on? chambers or your office um no not really i mean as of right now i mean i'm only in there two to three days a week so i'm not gonna you know make any big changes i don't think that we need, any, need anything unless council requests something um but yeah, but this is looking all of next year is there anything that you right you know, full time. And if we all show up again. Yeah, right. Um, that you see might be required. Think about it because we're not going to pass this. Yeah, right? no, I, I don't know. see us anywhere on here. And I want to make sure that we're not right. getting no. it through. I'll, I'll add, Jan, I'll add you to page five right after finance. And I'll move courts down a little bit. And I'll put copier effects, scanner, printer, uh, any any computers would come out of Kyle's department. So if she needed a computer, um, yeah. that's a that's a operating expense. And I think Kyle's already updated her computer. Well, that's why I want Amanda to take a look at it because I don't see anything. I need her to verify that not just in our building, but that every council member is already updated, upgraded, has what they need to perform. So. We can gotcha. take a look at that and just Amanda, take a look at that, you know, um, survey every council member 
and then just let me know if we need to add anything or request anything no matter which budget it comes out of council has its budget too so right right yeah i mean i know kyle and i talked about i mean that this has kind of been put on hold since we're not meeting in person you know with council having their own tablets and stuff um yeah but for 2021 yeah yeah so even if you know, we don't meet in person a tablet is still used right on a daily basis or well, can be used so yeah. yeah take a look i'll add you to i'll add you a section to page five okay yeah that's good yeah, I, say. I would like as a chair yeah we only <laughs> have, um, i don't want to go beyond eight o'clock because two hour meetings has always been cut off and uh, no matter where i can because after about an hour and 45 the brain there's, is just getting tired so we could wait and do major streets and in, in those last three pages at the beginning of next week since we're okay. not approving any of this yeah we could if everybody's agreeable to that i'll add that to the agenda I then talk in depth about what those projects are and what we see is come you know what we've got on the list if that's okay but with everybody yeah i'll find with that before John, we uh mr barris do you have a winter coat on no it's a north face light coat oh. You didn't, turn, uh, you didn't turn the furnace on yet? <laughs> no, and I, my wife won't let me do it until November 1st. What? Oh. Wow. <laughs> Mine's not on either. <laughs> there you go, Benny. Um, Baby, we should be part of this budget meeting. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I want to thank Mr. Burris for hosting all of this and putting the information together to all the department heads that have provided us the information um next week then we'll start out with those pages of the roads and the sewer project that's a little more in depth and then move into the working budget um the other thing is um mayor and i have talked about having a special meeting just for one item next week and that would be for the retention base in guadalupe mayor do you want to expound on that yeah, everything is complete with that. We're ready to go. Uh, we got everything back, so we're going to add that to the agenda. Hopefully, uh, I think we had 23 people bid on that project, and obviously 22. 20, 22. But we took the lowest and best. It's Fabrizi. Uh, they said they could begin on Monday. I didn't want to rush into that, so we're going to have a conversation about that on Thursday before the council meeting. And from what I understand today, I talked to uh, Mr. Gelati that they potentially could start that Monday thereafter. I don't know what the date of that is, but it'd be the Monday after, hopefully. Okay, so here's the question, because you and I <clears throat> talked about doing it next Thursday. That's a special meeting. Our regular council meetings, not till the 12th. Right, so I'm, I'm, I guess essentially what we're asking is if council would be amenable to having that added to the agenda to have that one piece con conversed about and hopefully have that passed if you guys would oblige that request. What day? That would be November fifth. November fifth. Yes, okay, November fifth. That's 5th. a special council meeting. So Amanda, you're going to have to put out a notice that we're um, calling. Going to have a special council meeting, just like you do a regular council meeting, but yeah. it's got to go out on Tuesday with yep. that piece of legislation that Mark should be given to you. That works. So I want to just make sure everybody puts that in their pocket. That'll be the last thing we do. Once we do the budget discussion, then we'll go into the special meeting just for that piece of legislation. So it'll be short, sweet, to the point. So will that be okay at, with that? So what time will that be at then? Well, Jan, shouldn't we just do that first? Because then we say. don't we don't have to hold to a timeline. Because if we get done a little early, we have to wait. So we can do that first if that makes more okay. sense. Well, we'll do it at six o'clock then. Okay. On November fifth. Okay. And then, and the then finance I, meeting will start at 6.15. Or you can say we'll start as, after the council. Yeah, but you usually give it time because that way people will log in. Okay. If I say after yeah. the council meeting and there's discussion, who knows? I notice all, all those little circles at the bottom yeah. of my screen. Like, holy cow, there's like 85 down there. There's seven. <laughs> okay, Amanda, you got it. We're actually, uh, we're actually, we're actually alone today. This is the first meeting we went alone. 
Kyle, you're coming over just with a lot of static for me. Yeah. I don't know. You're going to have to. No, you, he is. You're going to put some of that IT budget into your microphone. Yeah. Into your phone. <laughs> yeah. I kind of find it ironic. The IT director sounds the worst of everybody. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Now? Okay. No, it's, it's like really bad garble. Like, 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 sounds like you have a loose microphone plugged in. Sounds like I'm back in school listening to the teacher. <laughs> okay. With, it. With that said, prepare a six o'clock special meeting. Following is the budget. We'll start with the finishing the capital that Mr. Veris has put together. Then we'll start just with those department heads, police, fire, and dispatch for their working budget. Okie dokie. Sounds good. Maybe Kyle's voice is raspy. Yeah. Yeah. It was doing Thank it even if he was just unmuted and other people were talking. So it's something going yeah. through his computer. Have a good night. Thank you all. See you yeah. too. Thank you. Good night, everyone.